good morning i think uh, we've been told we're going to have a conversation on on how digitization has changed the course of the way we look at films today uh, shekhar i think why don't you start uh, or let me ask you you're a big advocacy of digital transformation you know that's something because you were shot on celluloid and you've moved on to digital uh, how do you perceive digital cinema today in the present day form of uh, in india well everything is digital now you know this argument about the should we was film better than digital is actually an argument that's not worth having i'll tell you why because um so how many of you filmmakers here okay so how did film come film came because film stock when it first came out had to be forced lit right so because it had to be forced lit every creative endeavor uses a technology and turns it into an art form even a child will pick up a crayon and use a crayon as technology to create a painting or a drawing and create it into an art form so the idea of having to force light created something we called film light right so what we used to do was rehearse the scene right bring the camera and watch it then let the actors go then he would light it and out of that light came an art form how do you beautifully light somebody's face how do you light that and that became film right now we have a different technology right we will find the art form of the different different technology now the new technology because there's a lot of people who keep saying film is better than digital it was right now i have a button on my camera that if i say i want to film look i can press a button it'll give me a film look the range of options on digital is immense number 2 i don't have to actually get stuck in this idea of creating a shot so i just shot a big series in the us what i would do is i would rehearse 10 minutes i would take three cameras in and tell the actors to act and do it and take anything and i would take three cameras and catch them i could not do that on film in film everything has to be set and then shot and so what i got on screen is something really energetic and it looks actually it was the young life of william shakespeare it makes you feel that you're in there it makes you feel you're in the theater in itself so it gives me digital is giving me a new art form a new technology a new way to shoot which film did not so that's I I think uh, if you really look at digital cinema today or let me put it whether digital or digitization has really transformed the way we look at cinema uh I think there are few things which we need to look at one is of course the fact that when you talk about old cinema um you've been able to restore films with the use of digital technology but digital doesn't come alone with the word digitization it has in fact three connotations one is of course digitization other is digitalization and the third is digital transformation is what your uh, streaming is that you put through digital transformation the whole advent of of uh, business standards or new businesses which forms streaming uh shekhar now that's something which is which is the new form today the streaming uh you haven't given a go to uh making a web film or thing how do you look at that uh, as the future well a series that i made on on the young william shakespeare was streaming it was 10 hours that streamed so you could stream and watch it now digitization has changed our world there would be no youtube without digitization there would be actually 80% of the use of the internet is digitized filmmaking young people are using you know when i made masoom i had no choice i had to beg borrow or steal film stock it was really expensive i had to shoot a film although it only cost me 11 lakhs the film at that time but 90% of that 11 lakhs was film stock and then i had to find a distributor theoretically today anybody here can take a uh, a cell phone make a f- shoot edit on their computer and be their own filmmaker own editor and put it up on youtube and be their own distributor 
So it's really taken what we call the media of film and made it democratic. We are hung up on this idea that no, film is only on theaters. No, film can be on 800 million cell phones. Film is content, what it is, it's storytelling. It, it could be storytelling on your cell phone, it could be storytelling on what you are calling the OTT platform, it could be storytelling on film. A, a lot of people come to me, sir, I'm film, how can I become a director? I said, yeah, you're shooting me, you are a director. No, 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 what they are really saying is, how can I become famous, right? Now, that's something else, not everybody that plays tennis can get to Wimbledon. But everybody can play tennis. In film, it never used to be like that. You could only beg, borrow, steal money and then make a film. No, anybody can make a film. And so it's caused what we… Uh, it's, a, it's a content revolution. Yes, some of it is good, some of it is not good. But the world has been changed by the digital idea of digital video and audio. We have a completely different world, absolutely. The changes are enormous. I mean, you, you, you're now uh, an advisory consultant at the MIT, uh, or you're teaching at MIT. No, no, I'm what we call an honorary scholar at MIT. Honorary scholar, yeah. I spend, so uh, that's so you, you're, sort of, you're sort of creating new technologies which is to do with digital? I mean, is that, is that something which is, which is what, uh, what the future is? What, who knows what the future is? But at MIT, we are constantly researching on the potential of the new future. And as new technologies come in, as storytellers or content makers, we keep embracing new technologies. Now, if we are to embrace new technologies, we are looking at, so what I'm doing there is looking at the future of technology, of storytelling in artificial, in AR, right? Virtual right. reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. How can we take all these three things, put them together, and is there another way of telling stories? See, the, here's something, if you want to hear about that is, people call it storytelling. It's not storytelling. It's story provoking. Even the best films, they're not telling you, I'm not telling my story. The best films are the ones that are in trying to tell my story, I'm provoking you to imagine your own story. And I think this is where the new technologies will help. Because they're immersive, can we use these technologies to encourage you to tell your stories? And, or imagine your stories in the way I tell you the story, right? So we are, we are exploring the technologies and how do we do it. And not only how do we, it's very easy to do. I can get all of you in, immersed in. So one of the projects they're working in is, can I make a 12-minute film on the moment of enlightenment of the Buddha. How do I do that? How do I take you through the process of enlightenment? I don't know what the enlightenment is, I can only guess. But can I at least take the, I'm not going to call it the viewer, or I'll say the experiencer, at least take the experiencer to the point where I can go and then see, can you discover how to be enlightened? You discover, I'm not telling you, I don't know but I can take you through that process. So that's one of the projects I'm working at. The other project is, can I create a sto uh, this, the significant story of the larger stories? So one of the projects we're going is, is music. Can we turn, can we use music instead of, because the fun, okay, let me, are you interested in this? This is not, okay. The most fundamental provocation point in the human mind, the human mind understands music more than anything else. The most emotional provocation is music and there's a reason. The reason is because it gets straight to the heart. Even stories have to go through words, music doesn't. So is there a way to use music in a way to tell you a story? So give you music and ask you to interpret my story through music, that's why. Music is such an important component of films. That's why we, we, we use music in films. So the use of music to tell a story is the other thing. Um, it's simple. If you and I, if I fell in love with somebody and for one year we had a conversation, is it possible to turn that conversation into a symphony? Is it possible for me to have a symphony of our relationship? Is it possible for me then to have a symphony of my life? So these are two things I'm right. personally going, but it's not digitization, so I'm sorry. I, you asked me about MIT. <laughs> it's, um, you know, ever since I started, 
I used to be a chartered accountant, I left accounting and people said I was crazy. Then I made Masoom and then I left to go to Hollywood and people said I was crazy. Then I went from Hollywood into other things, people said, actually, MIT is the only place where people didn't call me crazy because it's full of crazy people. And because it's full of crazy people, that's why artificial intelligence was invented there. That's why the world's best cosmologists are there. There's an idea of craziness that change lies, innovation lies in the idea of craziness. So I'm very comfortable. Yeah, so. yeah. okay. So now let me give you uh, a little insight into uh, where our digitization has reached as far as India is concerned. Uh, let me look at some of the some of the work which we had, whether it was on celluloid or whether it was on DG betas or it was on tape form or even VHS. And, and we were working on celluloid till 2014. That's when, uh, you know, we were still shooting on film and uh, various tape forms had come. And uh, if you really look at it, uh, and I was just sort of analyzing that how much of that material is actually accessible to us. Uh, and that would constitute sort of about 10%. So we've actually only digitized 10% right from the beginning of cinema or beginning of, of documentaries or whatever you call it, right from the 1890s. And that's only 10%. So that much of material is left. We are creating every day 2.5 quintillion million form of data, which is, which is what uh, is going to be created every day. And every single year you have a new form of digital transformation. I mean, there's a new, there's a new thing which comes up. The different Ks are changing. You, you started off with, with 2Ks and 4Ks and 6, 8 and 8Ks and things. The, the real issue, I think, which with digitization has happened is, one is that I don't think there are enough people who really understand the, the true sense of digitization and the accessibility of that. Digital, of course, digitization means accessibility, but that's not been made accessible. And the, the second big problem with, uh, with the way we are, we are going is that in terms of preservation, I don't think there has been a constant formation of understanding what is the best form of, of preservation. I mean, the one thing which I love about celluloid is that it's been there for 100 years. You can still go back to a scanner, scan the film, and you can do it like your old photograph. You go to a scanner and you can scan it. Digital has been changing so rapidly and so constantly. And, and, and you know, I was very interesting, Shekhar. I was um, attending one of the great preservation uh, conferences in Bologna. And uh, I remember that Kodak had produced this new form of digital preservation, which was like a metal, which was like a film. Uh, till they were bought over by scan disk and, and the hard disk. Because a lot of people who do not know that hard disk is the worst form of preservation. I mean, it's actually not a great form of preservation. It only lasts three to five years. But they were bought over by scan disk and Amazon because if, if Kodak would have come in that time, it would have killed the market of hard drives. And the whole idea about that is that you constantly keep pushing people to, to keep buying hard drives and saving films in hard drives without really knowing the future of it. So I think the big key problem for us has been that while we are moving in digital space or digital world, we still haven't found a source of constant preservation. And I, I can tell you one example of uh, when Farhan Akhtar and Zoya Akhtar uh, called me up in, 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 uh, in one distress because they had shot Dil Chata Hai on celluloid. And they had put all their films, digitized it, and put it on hard drives, till they realized that the 40 hard drives, that film had vanished from there. And they, they had to, again, take the film back to Prasad to scan them. So this is one of the areas where we are, I think we are still, you, you want know, to add to that? Can I go there? I feel uncomfortable sitting on the sofa. Do, where the organizers? Can I speak from the dais? Is that okay? Yes. Sorry, we want to go and speak from there? Yeah. Yeah, can somebody? Oh, right, great. So, this is the problem with technology, right? And it's going to get worse for you. Because every format change, everything changes now. 
you get, you know, you're worried about digitization. I'm worried about the engineer that's going into to start his engineering degree. In three years, when he comes out, he's going to be out of date. I'm worried about the doctor that goes to med medical school. By the time he comes out of medical school, he's out of date. I'm worried about Netflix. By the time they say, oh, we are a big, huge corporation and we own the business, some other technology will come and, and, and draw. it's already happening. So the problem that you're saying is going to be a problem that will never end because there is only one thing that we know about this world and about technology is everything is going to change. So we shoot in 300K, let's say there's a 300K. Within a year, we'll be shooting in 1,000K. Another year, we'll be shooting in 10,000K. Yeah. Another year, we won't have film. You know, or we won't even have a format. It'll just change all the time. So, yeah, as filmmakers, Farhan and Zohar, good luck, man. I, I saw Bandit Queen day for yesterday in a fest film festival in China, and uh, the film still stands up. Sorry? The film still stands up. I don't worry about all that noise and everything, the video noise. The story still stands up, right? I think you guys are doing a great job in trying to preservation of film is a huge job, but this problem will never go away. That, you know, technology changes and you say, oh shit, now it's changed again. Now I have to redo it all again. Uh, but, but Shikhar, how important it is for you to digitize all the material before 2014? You think that that's important for accessibility or that should yeah. have been done? Yeah, I mean, look, how can India ever let go of all of Satyajit Rai's films? That have to be preservation of our culture, of our, uh, of our, you know, of our history and, and of the history of film is really, really important. Of course it's important. Because, because you know, I learned seeing yeah. from Bandit Queen. Uh, yeah, but up to a point, we cannot worry about the fact that it wasn't perfect. Nothing will ever be perfect. It'll be good enough. As long as it's good enough, it's fine. The technology will always make sure that what you did yesterday was good enough. And today will be better than good enough and then it'll be better than that good enough. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different uh, storage spaces. Uh, again? Your, your different storage spaces. You're a great advocate for iCloud. Sorry, uh, there's too much noise. Yeah. Again. Storage spaces. Storage. Storage spaces. I mean, that is, that's a new, new area where everybody is trying to reach out. Find yeah, storage. Um, okay, let me tell you a little story about storage. I have a friend at MIT who developed a little pen drive, okay? You know how big pen drives are. And he said, Shekhar, in this pen drive, you can put in all the films you've ever seen, all the films that your family's ever seen and your friends ever seen, all the films that you want to see and not seen, all the thoughts that you've ever had, right? And I'll only use 2% of that storage space. Storage soon is gonna be free. Storage is gonna be like electricity. The, the technology of storage is increasing by leaps and bounds. So I think that all of Indian cinema can be put on, on a one pen drive soon. So no, storage is not the problem. It's not going to be the problem. That's where we're making huge, huge uh, technolo technology. Imagine that. There's another thing that he can do, right? That very little uh, pen drive, he'll put in a computer, put a camera on a street, right? Such fast storage space that you put face recognition out there, you know, where everybody is. It'll contact and get in touch with everything that exists. It'll face recognize everybody and on your computer you'll get, who is that? Okay, what's that person's history? What was that person doing here yesterday? What, you'll get everything. That's where we're headed. So storage is not gonna be the problem at all. That's resolved, I promise you. But isn't it important to have a choice of, of as an artist, the, <laughs> is it what? Isn't it important to have a choice? That the fact that you should have a choice of shooting in a medium which you should he he said okay. that take your bike. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shouldn't you have a choice of of a medium? I mean, you're talking yeah. about digitization. Yeah, 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 no choice, but as an yeah. artist, you should have a choice. Of, of course, medium. I do. Of course. Yeah. I mean, ask me uh, today. Um, if you asked me last year, would you rather shoot on film or digital? I would say film, definitely. But now on digital, I have a little button that says, do you want a film look? It'll be film look. Do you want a film, 1950s film look? It'll give me the 90s. The choice is amazing. What has gone away 
is the adventure of filmmaking. Yeah. I used to be a chartered accountant, sitting in a desk. I gave it up because I wanted to be, sit in, 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 in a desert and wait for the sun to come up. Nobody's going to let me do that again, right? I can't wait for the sun. Like Lawrence of Arabia was shot. Three days they waited for the sun to come in the right direction and they took their shot. Yeah. If I did that in three days, my career would be over. Because somebody says, go, you do it digitally, create a digital sun, you won't be able to tell the difference. So the adventure of filmmaking is gone. And creativity is driven by adventure. And the more technological, so, <coughs> like, editing is another problem. Yeah. What, we used to have a steam bag, right? So people used to use film. And I would say, hmm. So I would say to my editor, can you try it that way? And my editor would say, Shekhar, I'll take another half an hour to try it that way. Are you sure? So I have to think if I'm sure or I'm not sure. Then if I say I'm sure, that means I've really thought about it. And then they'll take the film, they'll find it in, in the mass of celluloid that was lying on the ground. They'd take it up, they'd cut it, join it and say, okay, are you happy? I say, no, the previous one was better. Now what happens is because it's all digital editing, the idiotic studio boss, that guy who's actually a lawyer, thinks he can know, knows content, there are many of them in India now, they'll sit behind you and say, Acha, aisa karke dekhao na, do minute mein. Acha, aisa karke dekhao na, do minute mein. Why? Because he has to justify or she has to justify her salary. That's what's happening. So films you see right now and you compare them with films, they are kind of carelessly edited. And you'll find they're over-edited. They're over-edited because too many people sit over and say, come on, yaar, tera kya jata hai? Karke dekha de na, do minute to ho jayega. And they say, I like it. So you say, who are you? You're just the money bags. So he says, then he called five other guys that are supporting the studio. He said, we all like it. And you say, I give up. Uh, so, yeah, there is this thing about digital that has taken away adventure. But it's not, it's, that's what's gone. Yeah, I, the I, idea is, like, when I did Bandit Queen, I did not see my rushes till I finished the film and came back to Bombay. I had no idea what I got. So just sitting in there was this pulsating yeah. idea. Mila ki nahi mila, kaisa lag raha hai, nahi lag raha That part of the adventure yeah. of creativity. Now I see it right there. It, it's on my monitor, whatever I shoot, right there. Okay, let me, let me ask you a last question before we open it out to the audience. Uh, and uh, uh, Shekhar, why are we not seeing a film? I mean, this is a, something which I'm a fan of yours, so I want to ask you, why are we not seeing a film from Shekhar Kapoor? It's been really long since we saw Bandit Queen. Yeah. Right? I mean, be great well, since then I've done three stage shows, I've done a musical, I've done two TV shows, major TV shows in America. I haven't done anything here. Um, Why? I mean. Yeah, I tried. Well, I, I, the pair go here, Poochar Ahmed would say, Ki pani kyun nahi bani? Well, this whole idiotic session which you can come to asking me why Pani never got made. Maybe I'm a. Shall I answer this question? Yeah. <laughs> I personally tried very hard. I think that we are global now. And the more we just think we are Indian cinema, the less we are. And what I found when I try to make film, a film here is the idea of global has not hit us in India yet. The idea of good enough is there still. अरे देखो ना वो बाहुबली कितनी बड़ी हिट हुई थी उससे बड़ी बनाओगे क्या? You know there is this, this thing that good enough is okay. The box office is good enough. The box office and success is, doesn't mean excellence. It doesn't mean aspiration to go out and beat the best in the world. It just means at that moment you got a lot of success. Success and excellence don't go hand in hand. So yeah, I don't like saying this because it sounds a little bit arrogant to me. But uh, yeah, we, I, I will make a film, yeah, definitely. I just need my team. Why was Bandit Queen successful all over the world? There was a reason, 30 years ago. Because Ashok Mehta was a DOP that aspired to be the best in the world. Because Renu Saluja, the editor, aspired to be and had the capability of being best in the world. We used to sit down and say, talk for hours and hours and hours over cuts and how to shoot this shot and how to shoot that shot. They both passed away. 
Where will I find another Ashok Mehta? Where is he? Where will I find another Renu Suluja? They were a breed at one point that were not driven constantly. Acha uski film bear kya kya aaj box office kya hai? Acha wo aaj box office you pick up a newspaper and the first thing you not the review, 50 crore kya. What's the film like? That breed has gone away. Yeah. There is a, that. If I find another Ashok Mehta, if I find another Renu Suluja, I promise you. Why would I travel all over the world and leave home and make a film? Why have I not made a film after Bandit Queen in India? Where are those people? Where are those people? Where is my support system? Does that make sense? Or am I being stupid? Yeah? All right. Thanks, Shikhar. Should we, should we ask questions as we... Yeah. yeah. Uh, questions, yeah. You need a mic? Okay. Yeah. Should we sit down? No. I'm fine. No, fine. I, I yeah. feel lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. And I'm looking at this entire journey, it is as good as an evolution of Indian cinema. I had a very small doubt because as a child, I used to always enjoy going to the theater with my friends, with family, and like, you know, watching the cinema. So it, it had a different kind of a cultural connotation to it. So when you said rightly, like, you know, from uh, single screen to multi screen and now coming down to Netflix, how do you see this entire evolution? It would take place in the long run. I mean, like that collectivization of going to cinema, that entire concept, will it also get diluted? I mean, it will be very solo. That's one of the things that we are researching at MIT is to give you a personal experience that transforms into collective experience. How do we take 25,000 people all over the world with headset on and make, make them feel that they are all in the same theater? That's one of the things. But listen, I love theater. I love going to the theater. I love the collective experience of theater. Comedies never work without you being other people. Somebody laughs and you laugh with them. I've had people, you know, in India, you know, somebody slaps your knee, right? <laughs> because they're laughing and they let us slapping your knee. But it's, it's, yeah, that's gone. I agree with you. I agree. But I have an 18 year old daughter. Try getting her to go see a theater. Go take your, you know, those of you that have 10, 11 year old kids, say, come on, chalo, theater chalo. They say, hey, I'm here iPad. They won't go. It's a different generation that's coming up that has not got used to going to the cinema. It's a different generation that wants choice. I don't want to be sitting in three hours in a film I don't want to see. I want to play. I want control. I want things. I want my, my friend to sit with me. I want to be playing, you know, massively multiplied games with people in China or in Japan. It's a different culture that's coming up. I miss it. I miss going to theater and I miss these... Play nabi kaha hota hai? i tell you a little story of uh, Mr. India. Okay, you ready? Somebody came to me the other day and said, everybody comes here, Mr. India, tu banao na yaar. Hey. So I said, kyo? Sir, sir ji, that's how this is. Sir ji, dekho, teen hafte mein, hum aapko dhai sa karo dete hain, Mr. India, tu banane ke liye. Mere ka, acha? Oh, to, yes, saat satra lakh mein bani thi. To, dhai sa karo dete hain. Sir, teen hafte mein, paisa recover ho jayega. मैं रहे पिक्चर तीस साल चली आप एक तीन हफ्ते चला रहे हैं उसको why would I make Mr India too right so there's it's a different mindset now it's it's quick quick consumption fast consumption where remember वो सिल्वर जुबली कुमार चित्र में राजेंद्र कुमार do you remember films used to run for fifty weeks in one theater we used to go by the theater यार पचास हफ्ते से चल रही है ये फिल्म दिलीप कुमार की now we just look at the first three days. That's it. And then it's so, on channel. That's it. And then it's on channel. It's a different. We're a different world. We move on. Right? Summer has gone. Winter is coming. We've got to shed our leaves and be prepared for the next summer. Anybody else? Questions? Oh, lots of questions. Uh, this is for Mr. Kapoor, for you. Uh, it's been really... Uh, you answered it that why there is no Mr. India 2. But question one is, does the, how did the idea of that watch come in your mind when you made this Mr. India? That's number one. And second question is uh, about the digitalization when you're talking about the streaming, the era we have now entered. You see all over the posters of Mirzapur or other streaming, it's like 10 episodes. Now, I mean, when I look at entertaining myself, I mean, as maybe the 40 plus people, probably we may not have that much of hours together to 
get to the storyline, get it. See, the, maybe sometimes you feel that two and a half hours or two hours, ten minutes would have been sufficient to entertain and be the info ten yourself. Then the ten hours of streaming, uh, one after question. another. Yep. Thank you. Um, that watch was ju not just me, there was me and uh, a lot of that was Javed Akhtar. I don't know if he's here at this time. It was his imagination was, you know, one of the, the, the great things about Mr. India was not just the watch, it was the characters. Um, it's the dialogue. It was Javed saying to me, uh, Shekhar Ji, character mil gaya. Ka, character batao kya? Um, mugha, I said, that's not a character, that's a dialogue. He said, sir, aap karke to dekhiye, dekhiye kya hota hai. He was right. He understood, sir, the watch and everything. Said, I can't take credit for everything. The other thing is um, streaming. It has increased the consumption of content a hundredfold. I myself have done it. I can sit in the, in, in the evening and start watching a series and if I like it, I'll watch it all night. People are doing it, you know, constantly they're doing it. They're watching all night. They, and that was the great success of Netflix. They recognized that pe don't make people wait every week or every day. Just give it to them in one go and they'll just see it together. And that's, that's their success. They understood that people, even 10 hours, they've all watched 10 hours. Yeah. Yes. The little lady there, she's killed me if she doesn't get a question. She's looking really, really <laughs> upset with me. Yeah. Hi, Shekhar. Hi. Uh, my question to you is I understand the quality of people you worked with before may no longer exist. But you're also recognizing consumption of content the way it is unfolding now. Hasn't Netflix inspired you to think of a quick consumption project? Something that you can make quickly and deliver and get your inputs right away. Your audience feedback. Oh, absolutely. And, and global. Make it a no, global no, project. Absolutely. You know what's happened is independent, cin independent cinema is kind of dying out because all over the world, the best writers of drama, if you go to Hollywood today, they'll say, sir, we don't make drama anymore. Like, Hang on, what else is a story if it's not drama? But essentially, the best writers have gone to what we call the, uh, to television and to platforms like Netflix. From, net, from independent cinema, they've gone there. And some of the best directors have also gone there. Those directors like me that like to shoot drama and not just, you know, write films, We've gone there, and yes, I'm going to do a very big net, not a Netflix, but um, I don't know, that the person who's written those books is here, but I cannot reveal it. He's in the, somewhere not in here, but one of the most amazing books he wrote about the opium wars, and we're trying to get that his, was. yeah, and we're trying to, we're planning to make that into a, a huge series. And now we have the money. I mean, people are spending $10 million per episode, right? So that means that for one season, you've got $100 million to spend, which is much more than a film. And you can get audiences immersed in the characters. So yeah, I know, it's, it's definitely a, 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 for all of us as filmmakers, for us to look at, yeah. You spoke about how the theater going is reducing like, because of uh, streaming. But uh, what's your take on 3D and like we recently had the first ever 3D film fully shot in 3D in India. But what's your take on 3D and will 3D be able to get, is 3D getting, still getting people to the theaters and because that's an experience it's difficult to replicate at home. Not impossible but difficult. Okay. You know, um, the first time 3D sound came in. I watched a Hindi film here at Metro. And I said, Yeh chidiya kaan se aage andar yaar? Theater ke. We don't, the problem is we overuse 3D sound. Not just also on films, people started to overuse 3D. Everybody went for effect and effect. And people, people forgot to tell a story. So the effects took over from the story. But if you saw James Cameron's avatar, you didn't feel any, it was 3D. But it didn't hit you on the head with its 3D. It actually, instead of coming out of the screen at you, it gave you depth. So you saw more in the story in that way he used 3D. So every new technology, we have to learn to be, like, it's like background music. Hey, yeah, Rahman ka music hai, yeah, lagao. 
you know. So that all you'll hear is the music. You just need to learn how to use new technologies. And 3D, yeah, he uses it all the time and it's good. Um, soon we'll have television 3D, soon you'll have 3D on your cell phones. You'll have much more than 3D on your cell phones. You already have. You have virtual reality on your cell phones. You'll have anything you want soon on your cell phones. So yeah, technology is going up that way. Uh, 54,000 theaters in China, some 48,000 theaters in the United States, and some 12,000 theaters sorry, only sorry, in India. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead. What did um, you say? I'll start my question again. I think there's 54,000 theaters in China, 48,000 theaters in, 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 in America, and we have just some 12,000 theaters in India. Now with the advent of Netflix, you know, with the online consumption increasing, do we really need more theaters in India? And why this disparity in the quantum of theater in the West and in India, we are the largest film producing country in the world. So let me give you a, a thing about it. We have approximately declining number of theaters and for all the languages that we make films in, we have 11,000 screens in India, that's it. And it's declining, I think it's probably down to 9,000 screens for five languages for all the films that we make, right? So it's, China on the other hand is adding 5,000 screens every day. From nothing, they're already into 60, 70,000 screens. And by next year, they'll have 100, 150,000 screens. So India is actually declining in its theater capacity, and that's one of the reasons why alternative forms of viewing are very essential. So 9,000 screens, 180 million cell phones, who are you going to make your content for if you want it seen by people? Or television. Actually, um, uh, the people who work in my office or my driver, I ask him, Sir, sir, wo film dekhi maine kaun si? He said, wo sir, what is the big Marathi film? He said, I must see. Sar, Sarat. Kashinath. Huh? No. Sairat. So I said, yeah, tu to film nahi dekhta, tu theater nahi jata, to tu ne kaan dekhi? Sir, share it par. Share it kya hota hai? Share it. See, even, even people who are saying they are watching films, 90% of the viewing is not in the theater. Tell me, we used to say that films is a, is a medium of the masses, right? Yes, we used to say that. We used to say something called, you're too young, I'm older. Chavanni class hota tha ek bar, right? What's it, Chavanni class? Where is the theater of masses when it takes you 300 rupees a ticket, you go with a family, it's 1500 plus popcorn plus time, go there. Who can afford to go to theaters? Who can afford to go to a multiplex? 95% of India cannot afford to go to a multiplex unless you're in the south where they, they, they subsidize them. So, theater business is very strange. It's the worst business to be in, really, in India. Uh, hi. Uh, my question is, you've probably heard Christopher Nolan is uh, almost fanatic about the usage of film. I watched uh, a video of his where he went into detail about, you know, the quality of film yeah. and the fact that, you know, the texture and the colors and so on, uh, you know, cannot be compared to digital. So yeah. what do you think about that, sir? Thank you. Um, I think that we both disagree on that, but I would say that he needs to experiment with digital a little bit more, all right? We all get addicted to that which we love. He loves film, I love film and he's made many more films and many more successful films than I. So I have to say, yes, that's right for you. Uh, but now digital can more or less, you can get the film look. And I'm saying the film look was not a natural look. It was a created look, right? There was nothing called the film look. I am looking at you is not a film look. Actually, television or digital will give me a much more real idea of what my eyes are seeing right now. But that's not a film look. But I can create that. In fact, when I made this TV series, I took old lenses, old film lenses, I old, took old cook lenses, cook lenses and put them on digital. It looked exactly like film. Sorry, you want to yeah. say that? He, he no. and Chris had a long chat. Right. So I think uh, I completely disagree with uh, the aspect. Uh, one of the reasons I disagree is that we showed Dunkirk on 70mm. We revamped the theater, which is IMAX. And uh, I don't know how many of you were able to see the film at Vadala. Uh, the, the, 
IMAX film camera gives you a resolution of 18K. No digital technology has matched that look. And that was one of the reasons why Chris or Quentin Tarantino or Paul Thomas Anderson and more and more people now in the United States are loving celluloid because celluloid reacts to a certain grain. So if you, if you really understand the, dif the difference between digital and what is celluloid, is that so celluloid has a lot of grains, a lot of silver grains or a lot of grains, which absorbs light and gives you not an even kind of texture or an image. And it, it allows you to, to sort of receive uh, a, a certain unevenness, which what Shekhar was saying, that you watch the rushes later and you enjoy that process, which is an adventure. Uh, while digital has a very uniform, because you're dealing with lines. Digital deals with data, deals with bytes, it deals with lines, and it gives you a complete look which looks the same. So today when I watch television or when I watch Netflix or when I watch, uh, it's very difficult to decide a DOP uh, many times when you're, when you're instead of shooting because they all look the same. It's like how the entire culture is wearing jeans and everybody looks the same. It's the same way with digital which I find, that everything looks the same. And one of the reasons why Chris loves it, and I think when we screened Dunkirk, and we had all the DOPs there, uh, some of the leading DOPs like Ravi Chandran or Avek or everybody who was there, they couldn't believe that an image can look so great on a film because they had forgotten the texture what film looks because the theaters are not there. The only theater now surviving in Bombay which can screen films is Liberty, which is the Art Deco beautiful theater. But otherwise, there's no other screening formats. Even the labs have disappeared. And, and the whole idea is to have a choice. The idea is not to say that, you know, like an artist, you should have a choice of the canvas with which you want to paint. And that is what Chris says, that, that for him, it's a choice. Even I would like a choice, that I can shoot on 16. Osham Aluwalia shot uh, on, on a film right now on Super 8 or 16, because he wanted that choice as an artist. It's not that he's not shooting on digital. And one great example was Sean Baker, who was here in Bombay for the Mumbai Festival. He shot his film on, on, a, on a phone, on an iPhone. But and that's digital. That's digital. And then he said the next film he thinks should be shot on 35. So he shot Florida Project on 35. So, so the whole idea is to have a choice for an artist. Uh, the fact that both mediums are very different um, and both give you a different kind of an experience. Uh, for me, of course, celluloid, there's nothing better than a celluloid because the whole idea of going to a theater, the magic, the light, the, the way it's projected and, and the way you watch your rushes, uh, where you don't know on your monitor where you have 10 people because I still shoot you know, advertising films and things. And exactly what Shekhar was saying, that you have 10 people around you who's commenting on that, film gives you that. But they're both very different mediums. I mean, there's no point comparing it. Yeah. And one of the things about digital is this is changing and it's constantly, it's exciting. And it, I think it's allowed a lot of people, and I would go back to Jean Cocteau, who used to say that I'm waiting for film to be as cheap as pencil and paper. Yeah. And, and he said it way back in 1930s. Yeah. And today, you know, you have digital which allows you the, the freedom. But also, where I have a problem with digital shooting is the discipline. One of the things which has gone completely is, is on the set, or there's just everyone and everyone becomes a filmmaker. Mind and, you, yeah. Avatar was digital. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it would look beautiful. So you can't say the discipline is gone. I mean, I, I run a pretty disciplined set. Yeah. It's not that even on film, you have a monitor with five producers yeah, behind yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? So we can we can we can end the day. This gentleman trying to ask a question. Yeah. Would you write about your journey biography? Sorry. Would you write about your journey? Would you write a book? Your biography. Are they here? Don't write me off right now. Abhi bahut time hai mujhe. Bahut film hai banani hai. Uske baad likhunga. My journey in film. Please. Thank you. So, will you wait? Ten years? Yes? Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shikha.